James Monsies and Adam Bowen have a lot in common. I went to college as an undergrad for uh, science and art. Double majored in physics and studio art. Decided to, to apply to this program at, uh, at Stanford. We wound up going to grad school at Stanford. We just had a lot of you know, a lot in common, and we all, one thing we also had in common was we were both smokers. We spent a lot of time together, smoked cigarettes together, and ultimately decided that um, we could do better. When Monsies and Bowen decided that they could do better than cigarettes, they formed an e-cigarette company called Plume. What we realized is people don't want a safer cigarette. They want to move past cigarettes. Plume later became Pax Labs. And in 2015, Pax introduced a product called Juul. In 2017, Juul spun off into its own company, Juul Labs. It's hard to imagine an area that can be more powerful to public health in particular, than to eliminate cigarettes from the face of the earth. It is one of the most successful consumer products of all time, if not the most successful, and yet it kills more than half of all people who use them long term. But we had always intended to build this company around the idea of making cigarettes obsolete. We knew that Juul would be the way to do that. Nobody had created an appealing product using this principle, so we thought, well, you know, that's, that's easy, right, like for us as product, product designers. Of course, it turned out to be not so easy. It took many years, many iterations, thousands of prototypes, multiple products until we felt that we really got it right. The team that pulled Juul together originally was probably only about 20, done on a $2 million budget. And man, things have changed since then. Jewels are the one of the most popular products that we sell here. I mean, on my college campus, it's really popular. I definitely know it's it's up and coming. It's one of those products that just flies off the shelf. They're used like a lot in parties. I've noticed recently a lot of people using the Jewel on social media. I've seen it on a, a Dave Chappelle stand-up. In the past year, Jewel sales have skyrocketed almost 800 percent, helping Jewel capture nearly three quarters of the e-cigarette market. Today, the company is valued at $15 billion. But this explosive growth doesn't come without scrutiny. The company faces lawsuits and upcoming FDA regulations. Jewel, at its core, is a vaporizer. It heats up liquid in a cartridge containing five ingredients, including various flavors and nicotine. There's growing scientific consensus that there's significantly less exposure to toxicants from e-cigarettes or vapor products than cigarettes. Juul is careful not to make health claims, but it's confident in the product. In fact, both founders said they have stopped smoking cigarettes and now only use Juul. We are undertaking significant clinical and non-clinical studies to support our application to the FDA, and we believe that those data will support a finding that our product falls lower on the continuum of risk than cigarettes. While more research is needed to study the long-term effects of e-cigarettes, new evidence suggests they may not be as safe as Juul hopes. If you had interviewed me two years ago, I'd have said there may be 25% as dangerous as a cigarette. Okay, now I think there are somewhere between three quarters as dangerous as a cigarette and as dangerous as a cigarette. And while you don't have a lot of the chemicals that are generated by setting the tobacco on fire in an e-cigarette, you have different chemicals. So e-cigarettes don't have a lot of the bad things in tobacco. They have other bad things in them. One of the key ingredients in a Juul pod is nicotine, and it's a significant amount of nicotine, 40 milligrams per cartridge, which Juul says recreates as closely as possible the nicotine delivery of a cigarette. But it's highly addictive, so much so that Israel banned the product a few months after it launched there. While it isn't a carcinogen, nicotine itself doesn't cause cancer, it interacts with cancer cells in a way that makes cancers worse. It stimulates your nervous system, and that over a long time is bad for your cardiovascular system and leads to heart disease. There's a huge amount of bad things nicotine is doing to your body beyond just the addictive effect. The company recently added nicotine warning labels and introduced a lower nicotine pod. There's a lot of misunderstanding about this category and about nicotine. Many people think that it's deadly, it's this um, serious disease agent, when really nicotine is alone is, is quite benign. It's a mild stimulant. It is uh, habit forming or can lead to dependence. And so for that reason alone, no non-smoker should ever touch 
you know, this product should ever touch um, a nicotine product. But non-smokers are using its product. And a lot of those non-smokers are kids. It's become one of Juul's most significant obstacles. A new type of e-cigarette is turning up in schools. It's a vaping device called Juul, but it looks like a regular computer flash drive. Slick, slender, and the newest craze among kids. It's definitely more popular among the youth. My nephew is, he's eight in junior high right Silas? now. Silas? Yeah, and he, he told me about Juul before I had to hear about Juul. Are you serious? Yeah, that's what kids are doing. And the negative health effects of vaping are magnified when it's done by an adolescent. Kids who use them have more asthma, they have more days off school. There's evidence linking them with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and other diseases. Addiction is not a phase. It's not like something kids kind of grow out of when they go from being teenagers to adults. Those changes are permanent. Juuling has even become a verb and schools across the country are struggling to keep it out of classrooms. We've invested $30 million in youth prevention activities, including secret shopper programs. And honestly, we're seeking guidance everywhere we can in how to migrate youth off and away from our products as aggressively as possible. This is bad for our business, right? That's the last thing we need. But it may have been Jewel's early marketing campaigns that escalated this problem. We had a ton of confidence early on when we were originally developing Juul that this was going to be something very different in the market. And the way we would stand out is originally through a flawed marketing campaign, uh, uh, not, not the best one. What Juul did was very different from those uh, other major brands of e-cigarettes. Instead of using traditional marketing and the media channels, what they did was heavily focus on social media platforms, very much appealing to youth and young adults. There is a high correlation between the activities on social media platform and their sales in retail stores. Kids, you know, 15, 16, they are also very much attracted to the content that appealing to young adults aged between 18 and 24. Earlier this year, Juul significantly changed its social media policy, now no longer using models in its advertising and focusing instead on testimonials from adult smokers who switched to Juul. If I was up, I was smoking. We've built the underpinnings and now the roadmap to ultimately eliminating all underage use of our product. And we need people to help us get there. We're also working with the Facebooks of the world to remove videos and pictures. And we are working to create long-term partnerships with social media platforms to help encourage them to remove or not permit this content in the first place. Jewel pods come in a variety of flavors, but this is another potential problem area for the company. Flavored tobacco products are a key way that the tobacco companies appeal to kids. The FDA banned cigarette companies from using characterizing flavors, in part because they are attractive to kids. Juul, however, believes flavors are vital to its goal of converting adult smokers. We are very supportive of reasonable regulation on flavors. We do feel, however, that flavors are incredibly important for adult smokers to switch, and that is our mission. We have this ocean of evidence that flavors are bringing kids into the market. And then we have, you know, a very limited body of evidence supporting these claims that flavors are necessary to help adults switch to e-cigarettes. Juul must submit its product to the FDA for review by August 2022, a recently extended deadline. But it's moving forward with a new product internationally, one that it says will give users more control over the vaping experience. We will be introducing a connected device version of Juul um, internationally. Consumers will, for the first time in this industry, be able to visualize and control their consumption. And frankly, it's incumbent upon us to empower them to do anything they want with our platform. And if that means to stop using it, we will do that. As researchers continue to study the health risk and schools and regulators try to keep up, Juul's monumental growth continues. We estimate that we've switched over a million smokers uh, to Juul in just three years, but there are about 38 million left in the U.S., so there's still a lot of room to grow. The first time I told my mom, we're gonna pursue this tobacco thing, her immediate reaction was, why would you do that? You can do anything you want, just God, don't go near tobacco. 
But the moment that I first used the product in her house and we sat down and talked about, you know, what this could do, right, for public health, she became very supportive very quickly. I think she's quite proud of it, actually.